put in the second pilot hole. You got the airbag. All right. <laughs> Silicone around here. The new inspection port in here. Hey guys, this is Lee here. Have you ever wanted to install an inspection port in your boat, whether it be a sunfish, a laser, a flying scot, or even bigger? Well, this video shows you how to install an inspection port. You might ask yourself, what is an inspection port? An inspection port is usually a plastic lid that you see on the surface of a hull. So that inspection port lets you gain access to the inner workings of the hull so you could do repairs or add some things on a sunfish you might want to do some repairs on your centerboard trunk or your mast step you might need to get inside especially on a bigger boat you might need to get inside the hull to add instruments or wiring in this video i have international sunfish masters champion eugene schmidt who wanted to lower his hiking strap and to lower the hiking strap he wanted to put a backing plate lower than what was installed on his brand new 2022 world's sunfish sailboat that he just bought from the world championship eugene recruited some help from his dad jim who by the way makes some really really good french toast thanks jim they will show us how to install an inspection port Eugene also will give us insight on why he wants to drop the level of his hiking strap. So you'll see that in the video also. So if you watch to the very end, I'll give you my personal tips and tricks that weren't able to be caught on the video to help you with the installation of an inspection port. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below in the comment section. I read all the comments. Before we get to the video, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, the like button. So if you could just press that little button, the thumbs up, and turn it blue. That helps the like button spread the video to all other sailors who might be interested in this content. So I appreciate it. If you support the like button, just give it a little tap. Just tap it right down there, and then we'll get right to the video. I'll wait, just tap the like button. Thanks, and now to the video. Here we are in Pascas Jam with my father, Jim Schmidt here. Dad, Give him, a, give him a little rundown of what we did here. Ah, well, I think uh, what, what Eugene need to do is lower the uh, hiking strap from up here to down here lower. Works better for him. I sail with my strap really tight, and so I have a hard time so sailing. So in, in order to get behind there and get some backing for the screws for the lower hiking strap, we put a cut an inspection port and put it here in the, in the deck forward so we can reach down in there get some nuts on the back of bolts or get a piece of wood block, whatever we need back there for backing. So we put the new inspection port in here. Came two inches forward of the uh, centerboard trunk. It's a four inch port. Here's the uh, here's the deck that we pulled out. It's probably what, a quarter inch with some About foam? About a quarter inch, mostly foam. Not in a lot of fiberglass, but it's pretty stiff. Seems well made. We also hit an airbag when we went in there and we just pulled it out. It yep. looks like there's plenty of airbags in the hull. There's the old airbag. So it turns out back here in the hull here, going down all the way down vertically in here is about a piece of one by two encased in fiberglass down here that held the, was used for backer for the straps originally. It's used for backer for the straps now. So we put the same screws back in exactly like they were. Turns out in retrospect, we didn't need the inspection port. So if you just want to lower your strap, you don't need to put an inspection port. But it's always good to have an inspection port. If you own a sunfish, sooner or later, you're going to have a hole in the deck. So yep. Get you it can, over with. You can get a little bag, put it in there, put your sunscreen, your lunch. Hank can throw his uh, cigarettes up in there. It's perfect. And you can dry, dry the hull out. Yep. And another thing too, guys, is is the way this with this with the strap down here and this bungee pulled up here what it in effect does is shorten your strap with the strap down low like this the, the strap is in effect a little bit shorter back here and it gives you a little more run here for it to loosen and tighten your strap a normal strap doesn't have this doesn't have this much play and if you had it up here if you buy this boat this is an intensity strap but if you were to just buy this boat brand new the strap almost goes from here to here literally no play i actually think it's longer than that distance people are starting to sail with with tighter and tighter straps just so they're connected to the boat this is a good rig and it's nice as dad was saying in effect there's uh there's a piece of wood there so all you got to do is lower it throw some silicone what else we got smash the like button fully there we go
we put in a second pilot hole just in case we need it to come around with the jigsaw come from the other, the other side. This use, they use a scrimp process for this hole now? I believe, I believe it is vacuum bag. There's an the airbag. We got it, huh? We got it. We got the airbag. <laughs> All right, let's pull that thing out. We can. Figured we hit we hit an airbag. Airbag with a perfectly what what size porthole are we putting in? It's a smaller one, huh? Uh, four inch, yeah. Uh -huh. Four inch porthole. Yeah. There we go. Let me yep. look down and see if I can look inside uh, here. Yeah, the airbag. There's another airbag. Maybe I'll get it. Ooh, it looks the glass looks nice down in there. We were worried about getting this too close to the here to the structure here. And actually, I think we originally had it right about here, and we moved it back here. We're probably two inches from the uh, front of the case, but that was the right move because you see right down in here, you can see the structure there on the, on the back of the board. So we actually made a good call by moving it back an inch. This takes a rough opening of four and a half inches. Four and a half inch rough hole, hole for the porthole and, and about two inches, literally from, you know, the, the center board to the, uh, to the hole. And that was enough to avoid the structure of the, of the board. Safe. We're using kind of maybe one size smaller on the drill bit than the screw. And you can see from what's coming out that that's a piece of wood in there. So Dad's saying that there's sawdust coming out of there, so that actually makes it feel better. I was worried that there's only foam coming in there. I'm using about two sizes bigger. A little bit bigger than the threads on the screw, so the through threads don't spall the... Uh, Gel coat off. Nice. Not as thick as it seems. We're just drilling the hole here, here for the uh, porthole. Going through like butter. Yeah, I do. One more. We do a little bit bigger at the top here. Again, just so it don't fall. Making it a little bigger at the top just so it doesn't crack the gel coat. We put the holes through, although it doesn't really matter because it's all going to be underneath the porthole lip. Just going one size bigger up the top. Okay. Make sure it's clean. Okay. Let that dry a second. So I've been cool. doing this with my father since, <laughs> what was my green opti? That maybe, where did we buy that from? The Penikees maybe? Well, yeah, the, before you had that, you had the clear one. Yeah, the clear one, but it was green, right? Green, with the, with yeah. the brown, it was all brown. All, yeah, it was all just, it had no, uh, it was just. No pigment in the gel. No coat. pigment. In the gel, it was a green winter. And you were probably seven years old, so. Yep, and then my next yacht was, uh, from Geyer. And that was 1030. And that got me uh, all the way through my optic career. And here we are about it was 35 a, years later. It doing was the, the green same one shit. that you got hold by a windsurfer. Yes, at the at Optimus Midwinters. Mid a windsurfer. T-bone doing. Put a hole in. T-bone. He was bowling about 25. All right, going in here. We got the silicone around here. Lining it up. So I'd like to thank Eugene and Jim for shooting this video and giving me the footage of installing the inspection port. I edited a video in a way that I felt that could give you the most information how to install the inspection port, but I also left in some certain things that I feel is really important in the sport of sailing. And that's to be able to spend quality time with your friends and family, your sons and daughters, to be able to spend time with them, to teach them a new skill and share your knowledge with them. As Eugene said before in the video, he remembers 35 years ago how he did this with his dad, with his opties when he was a child. So for my six tips and tricks, how to install an inspection port. So the first one is to, when you put the silicone onto the ring and you place it onto the hull, you might wanna rotate that ring a little bit so to spread the silicone 
across and make sure there would be no access for the water to get underneath the ring. The second tip I would suggest when you tighten down the screws on the ring of the inspection port, tighten them down only about 80 to 90% of the way, and then wait for about a day or two for the silicone to firm and get set all the way. And then after a day or two, tighten them the rest of the way. This way you get some more compression and it'll keep the air and the pathways for water from seeping in to the inspection port. So number three on the tips and tricks, I saw Jim clean off the hull and the surface before he put the silicone in. I'm not sure if it was said, but he used acetone to clean off the hull. So he used acetone to clean off the fiberglass dust that was on the hull. Tip number four for installing an inspection port. Make sure you measure from the inside part of the inspection port. The inspection port comes in a two parts, the outer ring that holds the lid and the lid itself, which is smaller. So make sure you measure from the inside because if you measure from the outside of the ring, the hole will be too big to hold it and the port will fall in. Tip number five for installing a inspection port, Eugene and Jim used a four inch inspection port, which is like this. Now, if you have huge muscles like I do, you might wanna use a bigger port. They also have six inch ports that are really good for sunfish. Generally speaking, you either want a four inch or a six inch port. Anything bigger than that is a little bit overkill on a sunfish. If you're interested in getting any of these parts, I'll leave links in the description down below. Now the sixth and final tip that I have for when you install an inspection port is when you actually put the inspection port in the boat and you're installing it by rotating it and screwing it down, keep the lid inside the ring. When you keep the lid inside the ring, it holds the ring stable so it doesn't flex. The deck is a little bit on a not flat, so you don't want the, the ring be flexing because when you do and it flexes and the silicone sets, you might not be able to get the lid in there and screw it in or pop it in. So if you like that installation video, check this one out too, and you might enjoy that. So I'd like to thank Jim and Eugene for helping me make this video. And as always, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell, and I'll see you on the water.